Gardeners, welcome back to my channel. Uh, Chacho, do you want to be in this or no? Yes? No? Okay, bye. So in today's video, I am actually going to finally get to doing a reptile room tour video. I know that you guys have been asking for it for a very long time and I keep putting it off because I want to upgrade so many enclosures. So I'm just going to show you guys what I have right now. Um, things are going to be changing in the future, but a lot of things have changed since the last time I made a video. So I'm excited for you guys to see how everything is looking right now, even though there are a million changes I want to make. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I hope that you guys enjoy seeing all of my animals and their enclosures. So this right here is my living room and Kiwi actually lives in the living room. So this is Kiwi's enclosure right now and don't mind the poop in the corner. That is his little bathroom area. So he is actually right in there. And right above Kiwi is this amazing tapestry that Michelle just got me for my birthday. So I just, I love this thing. It's the best thing ever, the best gift. Um, so yeah, I could just stare at this all day long. It's just so gorgeous. And Chacho, what are you doing? What are you doing? This is Chacho. He is adorable. So this is Kiwi, my leopard gecko. He is very, very cute. I think he is actually a she, so I'm not really good at sexing them though, but very, very pretty. I love Kiwi. Kiwi is just a little sweetheart. And this is Kiwi's setup. And this is my turtle tank. Um, I believe this is a 75 gallon, but I'm not entirely sure. I kind of just got it as a deal. This is Lulu right here. She'll probably get scared and jump in the water. Maybe not. That's Lulu. And Bubba is basking over here. This is their little basking platform that I built. And I kind of want to decorate it a little better, but I'm not really sure what to do because Lulu here tries to eat everything. So they bask up there. They have UVB and heat. And then they just have a ton of space to swim at the bottom and they're just very, very happy here. And it's just very spacious and I love this setup for them. And they both look so cute right now. And this right here is Banba's enclosure. He's my veiled chameleon. I believe this plant is called a corn plant and it's actually been staying alive. So it's great. It's great for high humidity. So perfect for Banba. And let's say hi to Banba. I think he's shedding right now. And there's Banba. He was shedding yesterday, so he still has some chunks like on his back leg and stuff. But he just woke up for the day. So hi Banba, good morning. He's just checking things out. Um, I don't like this one bare spot back there. I wanna put more plants back there, so. I'm always going to be changing things. Nothing is ever just going to be completely set in stone when it comes to setting up reptile enclosures because there's always something that I would like different. So I'll probably change it in the future. But hi, Banba. How are you doing today? And here's Banba. I told you guys he is like still shedding. Um, I just took a big chunk off of his tail. This side is like really sheddy. Um, but yeah, so here is a close up of Banba. And over here, we have Metamora, my green tree python, and her setup. Her enclosure is the only one that has actually had lasting live plants. All of my other enclosures, the plants die, so this is the only one that still is thriving and just looks amazing. So I'm very, very, very proud of this setup. It is a bioactive setup. As you can see, Metamora is turning very, very green. She's stunning. So yeah, this is Metamora. By the way, Metamora is in a um, 18 by 18 by 24 enclosure for people that are wondering, because some people think that this is a 12 by 12 by 18, and it is not. And this is Thaddeus's enclosure, and he is right here. He is adorable. He is a white tree frog. 
So yeah, this is his enclosure and yeah, there's no water because I just dumped it out because all of the springtails were just in there and he needs fresh water because frogs are very, very messy animals. And this is Chancho's enclosure, my Indonesian blue tongue skink, and he is chilling over here. Hey Chancho. And his water bowl is extremely dirty, so I need to clean that out today, but Chancho has been good. I can't take him out because he hates being held, so I kind of just let him do his own thing. He loves hand feeding, so that's pretty much the relationship that I have with him. That's pretty much all that we do. And right now he's looking at me wondering if I'm going to give him some food. But yeah, he's adorable. This setup is fine for him for now. It's very spacious for him. I may upgrade him in the future, but it's working for now. And I'm not sure how many gallons this is. I think it's like a 40 or something, but it has a lot of floor space. I don't know. It's really weird and short, but it's pretty much just perfect for this guy. So yeah, there's Chancho. So here's Vendetta. He's getting a ton of orange blushing on his face. I don't know if you guys can really tell, but his entire body, man, he's like so heavy. This is like a workout just to hold him. It's going to be tough when he gets really big. Like I need to start working out. So he's growing very consistently. He loves his food. He's all about his food and he's changing color a lot. He has a little bit of like eco earth something on his face right now. But yeah, he's just a beauty. I love him. Just so stunning. So I'm gonna go ahead and put him back in his enclosure. So here's Vendetta again. There's that bright orange, like he's so pretty. So he is in a four by two by two enclosure and he has a worm hide that I took out so there's like an empty spot over there I have to put it back in um, I took it out to take him out because he is always in his worm hide um, he loves to climb on this tree branch every now and then and he has a large water bowl over here as well as a cool hide all the way on the left that he absolutely never uses because he is always in his worm hide so yeah and he is getting so big I mean look at him He's getting like so heavy, it's literally a workout just to hold him, so, but yeah, he's a cool guy. This is his enclosure, and I love this enclosure, so yeah, he's pretty happy in here. And this is Ponyo's enclosure, and again, with any amphibian, the water bowl is disgusting. So, and there is Ponyo, so he probably wants food, he always does. Um, he also hates being sprayed, so just watch this. <laughs> he does the little backwards scoot. Um, yeah, he's silly. So yeah, that's Ponyo. Don't eat that. So this is his setup. Um, it works for him for now. Um, it's a tub enclosure that I made. I actually want to get um, something else for him, but I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to be doing. Um, I want something that will definitely retain the humidity as well as the tub. So it's something I'm looking into right now, but for now it's suitable for him and he is doing amazing. I'm worried he's getting too fat. He loves his food and he just looks really chunky to me. So yeah, that's Panyo. And this right here is Dude's enclosure. He's my bearded dragon. He's my little child. And there's Dude just chilling. He just had, I'm not even joking, like the most large poop of his entire existence. So I'm sure he's feeling pretty good. So he is in a 40 gallon. A lot of people say that I should upgrade. And I mean, honestly, I would always recommend larger, better for your animals. Um, but he's like really content in here and he has enough space and he doesn't really do much. And I take him out of his enclosure. So it works perfectly for me. This is the bare minimum for an adult bearded dragon is a 40 gallon. So definitely if you can go larger, go ahead and do it. Um, this is just personally how I like to do it. So it works out well for him. And again, this is Dude. And this right here is Chaos, my ball python. Um, he is a coral glow and he is just so, so beautiful. He's getting a lot bigger lately too. And he's getting a lot of those spots coming in, which I absolutely love. I think it's so pretty. This is Chaos's enclosure. So he is in a tub enclosure for now. Um, I would love to upgrade him and put him in a bioactive, more visually appealing enclosure, but this works for him for now. Um, this is his warm hide, which he's actually in right now. He's tucked in there. Um, his cool hide is right over here. He has a water bowl and then just some foliage to feel secure within the enclosure. 
although he is pretty adventurous and doesn't really care. He isn't very shy. Um, so yeah, this is his enclosure for now and it's perfectly suitable for him. And this enclosure right here is Janemba's enclosure. He is my pixie frog. And he's burrowed somewhere in here, so I'm not even sure where he is. I'm gonna have to just, oh wait, there he is. We found him. Here is Janemba, he's huge. He's kind of hard to hold, but uh, this is my guy. He is adorable, he's getting so big. Um, so he is in a 50 gallon enclosure. I took out his water area, I just have to put it back in because it's dirty. So yeah, he is a happy frog. And you guys know Mango, my African fat tail gecko. She is the cutest thing ever. This right here is Mango's setup, so I'm gonna go ahead and put her back. Um, she has her warm hide right there on the left, and then she has a cool hide on the right and her water bowl. And this is a 20 gallon enclosure, so it's very spacious for her. And she is doing amazing in here. And this is Bloom's enclosure. He is my plasma corn snake. I just did this enclosure. It's bioactive and a couple of the plants have already died. That's why the middle part is so bare. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it because I don't like how empty it is. Uh, but he has his warm hide over here. This tree over here is his cool hide, although he also goes underneath the water bowl and uses that as a cool hide. And he also has that little dinosaur skull that he can use for a hide too. So yeah, this is suitable for him. Again, I just don't like bare spaces, so I want to fill it in. So I'm not sure if I'm going to try live plants with it or what I'm going to do. Um, so yeah, still figuring that out. And here's Bloom. The lighting in my room is absolutely horrible. Um, he might be going into shed again very soon. He is growing a lot. Like he's actually getting thick now. So I'm like really excited because he has just taken so long to grow, but it is finally happening. So I'm very proud of him. Right here is my bioactive Pac-Man frog enclosure and Pumba is right here. He's actually starting to turn brown. He used to be bright green, so he's getting way bigger. He's ravenous when it comes to eating and he's growing a lot and changing color. So yeah, and this is his setup. He is in a 10 gallon and he has a dirty water bowl too that I have to clean out. And this right here is Bowie, my Brazilian rainbow boa. If I can find her face, there she is. Um, so she is in a four by two by one enclosure, which is right down here. And she has a warm hide right here on the right. She has a water bowl that's perfect for her size. And normally she would have a cool hide on the left, but we get a draft in here and it's been really chilly. So I removed her cool hide because she always wants to be in that cool hide. And then she actually got a little bit of an upper respiratory infection that I was able to correct simply by taking that cool hide option away from her. And it forced her to go into the warm hide and get the temperatures that she really needed. So she's doing a lot better now. I'm gonna go ahead and put her back in her enclosure. And go ahead, Bowie. And here is Citrus. He's very jumpy. And he is stunning. His orange is actually turning kind of red now. He's starting to fire up right now. And he has a red base. So he's just like incredible. I can't believe how gorgeous this gecko is. He's just changed so much. So this is him in his enclosure. He's in a 12 by 12 by 18. He's still growing right now. He's a juvenile. Um, so we'll see when he gets bigger. I'll probably upgrade him. Also, he might be a female. It's looking like a female, but it's impossible for me to spot pores because of his coloration. So if this is a female, I will be very excited. And this is Chip, my Dalmatian frog butt crested gecko. And I'm going to show you his enclosure. And this is Chip's enclosure. So there he goes. He is in a 12 by 12 by 18 and it is perfectly suitable for him. I don't think I'll ever be upgrading him just because he seems really content in here, but you know, things may change. We'll see. Maybe I'll upgrade him, but he's very happy in here now. So this is his setup. And this right here is Echo. He was my very first crusty gecko that I had ever gotten. My very first gecko actually. So he is a pretty big guy. He has a huge head. And this is Echo's enclosure. There he goes. 
Um, he is in a 12 by 12 by 18 right now because I upgraded him and he stopped eating and lost a lot of weight. So he is back in his small enclosure and he is thriving and gaining weight again. So he just has to stay in a 12 by 12 by 18. It's what he prefers. And I would like to add more foliage to this right now. I kind of just like changed things up last minute and Delta used to be in here and I took things out. So still need some renovations on this one because I don't really like how it looks, but it's doing the job for now. So that is Echo. And this is Hannibal. So he is getting pretty big. He is also a juvenile and he's being kind of crazy. So I'm gonna put Hannibal back because he's being a complete spaz. This is his enclosure. He is also in a 12 by 12 by 18. He's a juvenile and he's still growing, so it's suitable for him. I am sure in the future I will upgrade him to an 18 by 18 by 24 or a tub enclosure that has more space. But for now, this is suitable for him. This right here is Cookie's enclosure. It's a 12 by 12 by 18. Um, Cookie is a complete spaz, so I'm going to try to just slightly show you Cookie without Cookie escaping. There's Cookie. Um, he's stunning. He's like bright orange. He's a Dalmatian crested gecko. And he is completely insane and he stresses me out to the max. And that's Cookie right there. It's probably as good as it's going to get because Cookie is crazy. So these are all of the Exoterras, and then there's just the one other one that's Citrus over on this corner. This right here is Oakley. She's a female crested gecko. She's the one that gave me most of my babies. She is very, very chunky. She's gaining weight again. She's not gravid right now at all, so I'm giving her a break from her breeding season. And she is pooping on me, so... That is fantastic. Thank you so much, Oakley. So I just cleaned myself off thanks to this little one. And this is her enclosure. She is in an 18 by 18 by 24. And it's very spacious for her and she loves it. The plant died that was up there so I need to get a new one. And the succulent died recently. That was actually the longer lasting plant of the two which was really surprising. Um, so yeah, I also want to put more foliage in here. I kind of have like these leaves going up the poles, but there's nothing on this one and it's kind of bare. So I'm not really digging this enclosure right now, but it's a work in progress. So that is Oakley's home and that's that. This right here is Elfie. She's a female Dalmatian crested gecko and I've been getting babies from her lately. And she's absolutely stunning. I love her so much. She has the prettiest eyes. And this is her enclosure. She is in a tub enclosure because she is breeding. So she likes to lay her eggs over there. And this is her little setup. Again, needs more foliage. Something that I still want to work on. I want to get way more foliage for all of my enclosures. But it's suitable for now. And this right here is Sunny, my gargoyle gecko. She's an orange blotch and she is absolutely beautiful. I love this little girl. She's very gentle. Um, so yeah, this is Sunny. So she is also in a tub. I have all of my breeding females. Well, not all of them are breeding, but all of the females are in tubs uh, because they have to lay their eggs. So that is Sunny's enclosure. And this right here is Shasa. She is another crested gecko. And she's really pretty. I love her colors. And this is her enclosure. She is also in a tub. And she lays her eggs in here. And she's doing great. So yeah, this is her setup. And this is Delta. He is fired down right now. So he looks really pink. Um, he fires up to be bright red. So yeah, he is really cute. And Delta just jumped into his enclosure. He is also in a tub because it's just way more spacious for him. This is what Echo used to be in, but he just didn't eat in here and he just wasn't thriving and he was losing weight. Delta, however, is doing amazing in here. So yeah, this is Delta's enclosure. So I do breed crested geckos and I sell them at Curious Creatures in Chicago. Um, I do have some babies that I will be sending over there soon. This one I will be bringing over there this weekend. This is Feisty. Feisty's really pretty. Um, so yeah, that's Feisty. This is a new hatchling that will not be going to Curious for some time because it has to grow up. This one came from Elfie, my Dalmatian. So that one's actually getting some Dalmatian spots. 
And then this one I will also be bringing to Curious Creatures this weekend. Um, this one was actually born on Christmas. If I can get this weird container open with one hand. Um, this one I really liked. I was thinking about keeping this one, but um, I've decided just to sell because I just have so many geckos. I don't really need any more geckos. So this little Christmas baby will be going to Curious Creatures if you guys want to check out any of my babies. And then I have two other baby hatchlings that literally just hatched out the other day. So I'm raising those ones up as well. And they will all be sold at Curious Creatures. And those are all of my animals. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next one.